First of all, let me tell you, I got this question from this book, right, by Daily Math, as I told you guys last time. So check that out if you would like. I will have the link in the description for your convenience. All right, I'm going to start off by calling this to be f, and let's call the parameter alpha. And this right here, we'll just write it as integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative x squared, cosine, but instead of the 5, we are going to put down alpha and then x dx. Because look at this, f of 5 is exactly our original integral. And in fact, after we finish the procedure right here, you will see you can compute this kind of integral with whatever number you want right here. Very nice. Okay, now here is the time to do our derivative. On the left hand side and also the right hand side, we are going to differentiate both sides with respect to alpha. So let's put on dd alpha on both sides. On the left-hand side, I'm just going to write down the derivative in the prime notation. So here is f prime of alpha. However, on the right-hand side, we will have to bring the derivative inside of the integral. And that's called the Feynman's technique, or you can also call that to be the differentiation under the integral sign. When you bring this in, because inside here we have both the alpha and also the x, we have two things, right? So be sure you change that to partial derivative. And let me just make the alpha side uh, more clear for you guys. All right, so here is the integral from 0 to infinity. And then, again, we are looking at this as partial with respect to alpha and then all that. So we have e to the negative x squared cosine of alpha x. And then, of course, on the outside, we still have the dx like this. Now, we are going to work this inside out. So have a look right here. Integral from 0 to infinity. In the alpha world, x is a constant. So is e to the negative x squared. Of course, we will just write that down first. Here is the e to the negative x squared. Now, as we can see, alpha is inside of cosine. So we are going to differentiate cosine. And that will give us negative sine. And the input stays the same. But, Chen Lu says, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. With respect to alpha, alpha is the variable, x is the constant, so we have to multiply by x right here. Very nice. And of course, this right here, we still have the dx on the very outside like this. Alright, now, this is so wonderful, because we can integrate this part, and we can of course differentiate this part. So let's go ahead and do the di setup for the integration by parts. I will put this down right here, d and also the i. Plus, minus, to get ready, integrating this part, negative x e to the negative x squared, differentiating sine of alpha x. Keep in mind though, we have to do the work with respect to x. Right? We're in the x world now. So, Differentiating sine alpha x, we get cosine of alpha x, and then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of alpha x with respect to x. This time, we multiply by alpha. And then for this one, we are just going to do the integral in our head. We end up with 1 half e to the negative x squared, thanks to this x right here on the outside. We can just do use that for that. Very nice. Now, to continue, of course we know this times that, it's the first part of the answer. So, I'm going to just come back right here, and we are going to write down. Well, I'm going to put this on the top. So, we have sine of alpha x, and then over. We have the 2, and also bring that down because of the negative exponent. So, we have 2 e to the positive x squared. That's the first part of the answer, so don't forget to plug in, plug in, right? from 0 to infinity. And then, to continue, remember, we have to multiply this row, and this right here is still an integral. Negative alpha, and then we have the 1 half. So let me just write down minus alpha over 2, the constant in the front, and then put this and that inside of the integral, right? So we have the integral still going from 0 to infinity, and we have this first, because why not? And you'll see we have a small data foo. Because doesn't this look familiar? Yes, it does. It's our f of alpha. Alright, so now, 
Look at this. This right here is super nice because the answer to this is zero. When you put infinity to here, right, e to the infinity, and then you square that, man, the bottom is so much bigger than the top. The top is at most one, right? Or negative one. Like, yep. Well, you get zero. And then when you put zero into here, thanks to sign of zero, you get zero as well. So we end up with this. This right here, we have zero. And then I will put down minus alpha over two. And this right here is our f of alpha so we will of course just write that down and now remember the left hand side we have f prime of alpha and then on the right hand side we have negative fish over 2 times f of alpha like this right yes this right here is a differential equation but don't worry this right here is a separable differential equation so it's not so bad and i'm going to just do the work right over there for you guys I'm going to write this as df d alpha, right? So df over d alpha. And this right here is equal to negative alpha over 2, and then multiply by f, like this, right? And then separate the variable, divide the f on both sides, multiply the df, d alpha on both sides. So we have df over f, this is equal to negative alpha over 2 times d alpha. And then, of course, we can integrate both sides now. Very nice. The left hand side, we get ln absolute value of f plus a constant, but don't worry, just do it on the right hand side. Integrating this, add 1 here, which you get 2, and then divide it by 2. So we end up with negative alpha squared over 4 plus our first constant. Now, to isolate f, let's do a lot of things in our head. Do e to that power on both sides. e to this power is the same as saying e to this power times e to the c1, but c1 is a constant. E is a constant, C1, E, just constant. E to the C1 is the constant, very nice. And then do the absolute value. You have to take, take it out of the absolute value, do the plus minus, so you have another constant. Anyway, I will just write this as F. That's equal to our constant, I'll just put it as C2. And then we have E to the negative alpha square over 4, like this, right? Well, this is actually our f of alpha, and we solve this differential equation. This is very nice. But the problem is that we have a c2 right here. <sighs> oh well, this right here refers back to our original integral, and hopefully we know something about that. So have a look. This right here is the same as a integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative x squared, cosine of alpha x dx, and this is equal to c2 e to the negative alpha square over 4, like this. Well, what do we know about this? The truth is, we never liked the cosine of alpha x in the first place, right? So now let's think about how can we get rid of this. Oh well, in this situation, let's go ahead and let alpha to be 0, because if we put 0 inside, cosine of 0 is just going to be 1. Very nice. And of course, we can also put a 0 right here. So have a look. This is going to give us the integral going from 0 to infinity, e to the negative x squared only, because this part will be 1 when alpha is equal to 0. On the right-hand side, we just get c2, because when you put 0 right here, e to the 0's power is 1. So that's very nice. And now, what's this? The Gaussian integral. This right here is just half of that, right? So this right here is famously equal to square root of pi over 2 which is the c2 right there. So now, this right here, square root of pi over 2, we can just put that back, and we get our f of alpha. So I will go back here for you guys. I will tell you, our f of alpha, which is equal to our original integral right here in terms of alpha, this, in fact, is equal to square root of pi over 2, and then times e to the negative alpha square over 4. And now, depends on what alpha value that you want, you can actually end up with a lot of very nice looking integral. Our original one, of course, is when alpha is equal to 5. This right here is nicely equal to square root of pi over 2, e to the negative, put the 5 in here, so we have 5 square over 4. Of course, this is square root of pi over 2, e to the negative 25 over 4. Very, very nice. 
You see, you have the E, you have the